Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video I'm going to talk about SSD and it, why it makes sense to upgrade to a SSD drive. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, most of the users generally upgrade their computer every two or three years. Basically, they upgrade the processor. But one thing that doesn't change is the storage. Basically, they use the traditional storage, that's the hard drive. This is a traditional hard drive. And the problem with this is that though the capacities of our hard drives have increased a lot, we used to just get about 100 GB a couple of years ago. Now we can get three terabytes of uh, hard drive. The speed at which you can access this data hasn't improved a lot. And SSD come into the picture. The problem with the traditional hard drive is that our processors have become really fast, but as our hard drives are not able to send that data to our processor, everything slows down and it becomes a bottleneck. So let me give you an example with an actual bottle. So here we have one bottle and think that the data is going to pass through this and this is our processor. Uh, as you can see, this part is wide and this part is narrow and our hard drive is over here. Let's say our processor, it's a latest processor, that's an i7 or whatever, can process 500 units of data per second. But as you might have been noticed, our hard drive is here. Actually, our hard drive is not capable of transferring 500 units of data. So uh, it might be just uh, sending about 100 units of data per second to our processor. So as you can see, though our processor is really powerful, but it's being slowed down because of our hard drive. Now taking the same example of the bottle, now we have a new bottle. What we have done is we have changed the hard drive and now we have an SSD. And this is our processor. As you notice, with an SSD, the path is really wide. So it can transfer a lot more data faster than a traditional hard drive. So generally a SSD drive is much faster than a traditional hard drive. But to explain why, let me give you a quick overview how a hard drive works. Basically a hard drive, basically it's a mechanical device. Basically what, uh, ima just imagine a circular disk like a CD-ROM or something like that. Uh, that's basically on the hard drive. They, these are known as basically platters and your data is basically stored on them. And to access that data, basically your hard drive has a motor inside it and this whole spindle basically rotates really fast. The 5200 RPM, the 7200 RPM is this basically the speed at which the splitter can basically rotate. And we also have a head over that, which actually when this platter is rotating, it reads the data. So as you can imagine, to access the data, the hard drive has to rotate a lot. And basically the head again has to move up and down to access the data. And all this basically takes time. It's in milliseconds, but with a large amount of data, it can basically add up. There's one more basic problem with the hard drive is that generally the hard drives are really fast if uh, the data is basically sequential. For example, uh, let's say we have 50 uh, megabytes of data that we have. And as I have told, this data is basically stored in a circular platter. Let's say this 50 MB of data is in a straight line. That's basically just like this, like a smiley face. It's connected. So the hard drive can read this data really quickly. Uh, generally, modern hard drives can read basically anywhere from about 80 MB to 100 MB. But this 80 and 100 MB of speed is only if the data is basically in a straight line like this. Sorry, circular. But generally in computers, the data is not stored like that. It's basically scattered everywhere on the disk. And this is where hard drives basically have a huge problem because imagine let's say this is our hard drive and the data is one one uh, bit of the data is stored here one bit over here one bit over here one bit over here the hard drive has to rotate a lot and the head has to constantly align itself to read the data so basically uh, with the random data your hard drive performance goes really low it can go down to as low as about 2 mb per second on the other hand, these problems are not faced by the SSD. Uh, basically, SSD, think of SSD as nothing but uh, uh, basically it's a drive on which the data is stored on memory chips. Uh, do not mistake it with your RAM. With your RAM, if your computer is switched off, the data gets lost. But on a SSD, basically this is not the case. It is flash memory. So even when the power is switched off, the data is over there. 
and as you know with memory the access time is really uh, low so it doesn't matter if the data is scattered everywhere then also the access time is really fast for uh, for example uh, on a typical hard drive the access time is about 15 milliseconds and compare that to ssd that's 0.2 milliseconds so ssds are really fast and again even in the sequential uh, data access that's where data is uh, aligned properly a uh, traditional hard drive can get about 80 to uh, 100 MB per second transfer rate whereas a fast SSD can touch around 500 MB of data. So you might be asking what are the practical benefits of using an SSD and what difference will it make in my real life. For example let's say your Windows computer generally now takes about 50 seconds to boot with a fast SSD like this it can come down the boot time can come down to about 20 seconds again one more thing is that uh, where ssd is really advantage is that let's say you have this uh, big huge program let's say for example photoshop or something like that with a traditional hard drive it might take about 10 or 15 seconds to load with a fast ssd that can come down to about three seconds so generally uh, loading uh, big programs and moving around with files will be a lot faster and your, thus your computer will feel a lot faster. For example, uh, I have a MacBook Air which has a built-in SSD and if you compare my i7 desktop to that, I at times feel that my MacBook Air is much faster in booting and accessing files. Though the MacBook Air has a very outdated processor that's a core to duo at just 1.8 gigahertz it beats my i7 uh, desktop at times. It's just because of SSD. But everything is not rosy with SSDs. The problem with the SSDs is that it's the price. For example, uh, I have this uh, Kingston SSD. This is a 96 GB SSD. And uh, this is going to cost approximately about $150. And compare that to a hard drive. You can get basically I don't know about uh, uh, three terabyte or two terabyte of hard drive. So when it comes to raw storage performance, a traditional hard drive wins over SSD. But when speed of access is required, SSD is way faster. So what I suggest is that to take advantage of SSD, basically you can go with a low, low capacity SSD like a 60 or a 96 uh, GB SSD like that and load and make it your primary C drive where you load your operating system and all your basically programs and files and you also attach a traditional hard drive and basically you should store all your data like uh, videos, movies, uh, music etc those are large files on the traditional hard drive that way you can take the advantage of the speed of the SSD and basically you can take the advantage of a standard hard drive for storage. Now you might be saying that all this theory is uh, great but where are the actual uh, performance results? Basically Kingston technologies have been really helpful and they have sent us basically two SSD drives. This is a SATA 2 drive and this is a SATA 3 drive. Basically what I'm going to do is in the next coming weeks I'll be doing a lot of benchmarkings and compare these drives with the traditional hard drives. So subscribe to my channel for more info. That's it for now. This is Ranjit for tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.